Hello everyone and welcome to the open day for the UAL and graduate diploma in creative computing at the Creative Computing Institute. My name is Georgina Cadavila. Thank you for joining us in this session today. We are here to host the first half of the online open day for the UAL and graduate creative uh, computing diploma. In this information session, we'll go, we're going to have with us Murat Khan, who's the course leader of the graduate and UAL diploma alongside two amazing lecturers at the course, Artsy Nazar and Jens Geis. We'll also have the pleasure from hearing from current students at the course, Sam, Nadine and Ashley. And so before we start to give you an overview of how today's session will be structured, we're going to start by talking a little bit about the Creative Computing Institute first. And we've got three videos which will talk you through the amazing facilities and resources that we have available to our students. Uh, we'll also talk about the public program, research mission, and social mission that we have here at the Institute. And finally, we'll also talk a little bit about the vibrant atmosphere and local area that we have around our campus in Southeast London. After that, I will invite uh, Murat Khan, who's the course leader at the Diploma, to join us. And he will give us a presentation about the course approach, structure, and units alongside Arti and Jen. And right after that, we'll move on to the Q&A section, where we'll have the chance to go through some frequently asked questions about the Diploma with the current students, uh, Sam, Nadine, and Ashley. And during that section and during the whole session today, we encourage you to send us any questions that you might have on the chat section on YouTube. So please, if there's any burning questions about the diploma or CCI overall, feel free to share them with us and we'll do our best to cover them during the Q&A section in the end. And before we continue, just a note to say that if you have any difficulties following along the session, please know that this video will be uploaded on our YouTube channel with English closed captions. So if you miss any detail, don't worry at all because you'll, you're going to have the chance to uh, catch up at your own uh, pace and with English uh, captions as well. So let's get this started. And we'll begin by watching a video that will walk you through the facilities, resources, and spaces available to all Creative Computing Institute students. Thank you for being here. Welcome to the CCI Facilities Tour. Over the next few minutes, we are going to show you around the campus and tell you a bit about the facilities and resources available to our students. CCI South London is located across two buildings along Peckham Road in Camberwell. We share our buildings with Camberwell College of Arts, which is a fantastic opportunity for CCI students to get to know and collaborate with students studying courses like fine art, photography, graphic design and illustration. The Green Coat Building hosts teaching spaces and technical spaces for students studying creative computing and creative robotics. It also hosts the Dark Lab for AR, VR and Interaction Design. This summer, we are going to be creating additional technical spaces in this building to support the new creative robotics courses that open in September 2023. CCI is located on the fifth floor of Peckham Road, where we have teaching spaces and technical labs, as well as a kitchen, which is our main student hangout and study space. We have several high-spec workstation computers where you can work on machine learning, data science and other intensive computing tasks. We have a library on site with access to a range of books, ebooks, periodicals and databases. Our dedicated librarian, Beninia, ensures that these resources are kept up to date to help you complete your studies. Across the courtyard is Gardens House, one of a growing number of halls of residence across London. And on the ground floor is the Learning Zone, a space for self-directed study that is open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, to all UAL students. There are places to eat, like our canteen, student advice centre and support services, and an art and material shop. In summer 2023, we will redevelop the former London College of Fashion building at High Holborn. We will share this building with UIL's brand new PhD hub, which will help to ensure that CCI's focus remains around the development of world-class research. At our Holborn site, we will create new technical, teaching and library facilities to support our new courses in computer science and data science. The technicians here at CCI 
all have a decade of experience doing really cool stuff with emerging technology. We'd love to help the students here with any questions they have about their projects. The Dark Lab is for experimenting with interaction, projection, sound and VR. Great for permanent projection setups. We've got a couple of VR booths, we've got loads of speakers and many other toys to play with. I specialize in creative coding and especially interactive things using Kinect and cameras and game engines, 3D graphics. We have a whole bunch of equipment that students can take out on loan including projectors, Kinects. We also have laptop lockers where you can get a laptop to work with. Physical computing really is just the connection to the physical world, to the data. Students have, have played with physical computing in all sorts of different ways. A lot of interaction with gaming and the VR world as well. Sensing various different bits and pieces using touch especially, all sorts of different sensors. Uh, to put things in a virtual world or vice versa. They could have things coming from a virtual world and bringing them into the real world. We generally lend Arduinos to all of the students and with that we have a collection of different modules. This allows us to interact with the world in various different ways. Those modules could be sound sensing, they could be image sensing, they could be sensing the environment in some other way. But the benches here are for the students to solder and uh, prototype put different boards together. We have different components with different levels of exploration with electronics, so you can quickly get something together on breadboard or you might want to make something that's more solid. I help students who want to use the digital knitting machine, the digital embroidery machine, and who are also thinking about incorporating electronics or computation into textiles or wearable kind of technology. We have a Silver Reed digital knitting machine, um, so that's a domestic knitting machine that can be computer controlled, so you can use it to create digital patterns, and that's used to produce knitted fabric. I tend to think of it like a 3D printer kind of for textiles. And then the other textiles machine that we have is a brother digital embroidery machine. So that's kind of fully automated programmable embroidery machine that you can use to embroider textiles. This is Digital Fabrication Lab, and we have 3D printing machine and laser cutting machine here. For our 3D printers, you just drag your design into the software and slicing it and directly push it to the printer and your design will be materialized. For the laser cutter, it's also very efficient, even very complex pattern. It'll only take like uh, several minutes. Most of students will use it to um, generate the housing for their physical computing things. It helps students to materialize their project quickly. To find out more about our facilities and equipment, please visit wiki.cci.arts.ac.uk. Now, a lot of students are also interested in finding out more about the research themes that we explore here at CCI and the social mission that underpins our research, but also our teaching and the public program activities that we run. In the following video, we will share with you all about it. CCI's key research themes are creativity, machine learning, and AI, human-computer interaction and platforms, and big data and digital citizenship. So we're interested in how machine learning and AI can transform people's creative practices, enable the creation of totally new kinds of work in music and art, and enable new people to get involved in creative practice. We've created a lot of software tools like Wekinator, Mimic, and InteractML, which are used by tens of thousands of people around the world to make new music and art and games. We've had staff and students exhibit work that's created with AI at venues like the Whitney and the Barbican, um, and we've had collaborations with artists and musicians like Arca, Massive Attack, and others. A number of staff and students are also leaders in community and activist groups. For instance, the Code Liberation Foundation teaches women and non-binary people how to make games, and the Critical Platform Studies Group explores how digital platforms might encode and even reproduce patterns of problematic power structures in society. 
This rich and exciting research environment is the product of many staff coming together from lots of different disciplines. These include not just computer science and art, but music, engineering, design, philosophy, art history, and all sorts of other domains. We all bring our excitement and experience from these different research projects with us into the classroom. Uh, and it's a place that I really love teaching and I'm excited to share it with you. CCI's teaching, research, and outreach activities are all informed by our social mission. This mission has three components. They are digital inclusion, diversity in technology, and digital entrepreneurship. First, we are committed to the inclusion of marginalized people in the creation of technology and in the use of technology. This informs what we teach both in the classroom and beyond the classroom. It also means that we have to recognize that the lack of diversity in the tech workforce right now both uh, stems from and contributes to broader problems in our society, and we have to address these too. Secondly, we're really mindful about the impacts that technology has on the broader world. We have to recognize the potential harms that come with technology, whether that means um, harms to well-being or even exacerbating bias and inequality. At the same time, we're very involved in projects that aim to have a more positive impact on the world. We are collaborating with the Decolonizing Art Institute at UAL right now to try to surface and mitigate bias in museum collections across the UK. We have staff and students, some with disabilities themselves, who are making technologies that enable new ways for disabled people to interact with technology and create new forms of technology for themselves. And third, CCI is committed to creating digital entrepreneurship opportunities for marginalized people. If we want tech to be a force for good, we need to enable people to apply technology in ways that they're excited and passionate about, where they know technology is going to be useful. So this means applying creative computing to new application areas, to addressing needs in people's communities, and to affecting social change. The Creative Computing Institute's public program can be anything from talks, workshops, short online tutorials, conversations, and it's really aimed at engaging with the community outside of our students. Students join in it too, but it's very much for the general public. The reason I run it with so much passion is because it's a part of my ongoing research and practice, which is about including unheard voices in technology development. I think that we've got as much to give communities as we can learn as an institution from communities. And so engaging with the general public is engaging with users and having that dialogue, that critical dialogue, and then coming back and designing software and hardware from a more informed position is really important. I would love to tell you a little bit more about TechYard. It's a huge part of the CCI's public program and I've been running it for almost three years now. So it started in the pandemic as an online tutorial course for young people and now it's grown into a hybrid program. We go into schools, we run workshops here at the CCI, we collaborate with galleries all around London and hopefully soon beyond. And again, it's the ethos of engaging people outside of our student cohort with the critical creative computing conversation, ethics, and of course, like skills as well, right? So we can run 3D modeling workshops, virtual reality workshops, and we work with beyond young people now. So I do loads of stuff for young people, but also done some work with adults as well. Examples of past public program workshops that we've run include inclusive design in wearable technology, designing a feminist chatbot, and queering voice AI trans-centered design. And the last video that we've got prepared for you will give you an idea of how vibrant and exciting is the area and culture that surrounds CCI's campus in Southeast London. I hope you get to enjoy it as much as we do. The area of Peckham and Camberwell is very much becoming a centre for art and performance and music and so it's a natural home for what is a brand new centre of creative technology. There's so much to do in terms of eating out or bars, pubs. It's very easy to get to like Brixton, Peckham from Camberwell. I love Peckham. Something about the area, Camberwell, Peckham, Newcross, Stepford, with Goldsmiths as well kind of creates quite a nice community. I definitely feel like where I live, which is close by, has a kind of community spirit. 
every year it just grows in terms of more things to do, cafes, galleries. The galleries I like to go to is the Hannah Barry Gallery, the South London Gallery, Peckham Levels, do a lot of pop-up galleries, so it's always changing. Peckham Plex is really cool. It's just next to Peckham Levels. The best thing about Peckham Plex is the cinema tickets are $4.99 and it's the cheapest cinema in London. Also in the area, there's lots of parks. My favourite park is Brunswick Park. It has Bauer Art Gallery set up by UEL students. It's just got such great access into other areas in town. The East London line goes straight to Hoxton, Shoreditch, Dalston. The community at CCI, really friendly. Everyone can just express themselves and just be themselves. It's my third year studying at the Creative Computing Institute and I've been really enjoying my time and I'm very happy with all the knowledge I've got from the tutors and my peers. The community is really nice here. I feel like every time I'm stuck, I can always find the right person to talk to and I always get further with my project. Something about the space is really nice. It's a very kind of calming environment nice teachers I find so it, it kind of creates a welcoming environment. I feel like I can spend a whole day here and feel pretty happy. I can safely say that the technicians are really attentive and kind of excited as well. <laughs> if you get Pete talking about something he'll talk to you for like a very long time about like 50 different things that you could be doing with what you have. I also go to the technical space quite a lot because it's really nice to just walk in and ask questions and then solving the, the issues that always come up when you code. I think the most valuable thing I've learned here is that just by talking with people and asking them about what they're interested about and what they're passionate about, this is how I've learned most. All right, now it's time to start talking about the UAL and graduate diploma in creative computing, the reason why you're all here today. So I'm very happy to pass on the mic to my colleague, Murat Khan, who's the course leader of the diploma and who will share with you the course approach units and content. Hello, Murat. Hi, Regina. Thank you. Um, I'll just share my screen really quickly so that we can see everything and then we can get started. So, uh, yeah, as Georgina mentioned, I'm Murad. I'm the course leader and senior lecturer on the diploma and graduate diploma. Uh, welcome to the first part of our online open day, which is an information session covering the course. We'll go over things like the course structure, how to apply, and have that little Q&A to start the students towards the end. Um, I'm going to start by giving you an overview of what the diploma is about. And we'll also take a look at some of the student work that's been produced uh, throughout the course and on the units that you'll be taking. And as Georgina mentioned, we have Erti and Jen here, who are the unit tutors um, on some of our units across CCI and across uh, the diploma as well. And we'll also be joined by our current students as well. So what is the diploma? Um, at a basic level, the diploma is a one year course in creative computing. And it's across UL students at any college and any course between your second and your third year. Um, we offer the graduate diploma as a pre-master's pathway if you've graduated from UAL or any other university. And we have collaboration across our diploma students and graduate diploma students as well. You'll learn a range of skills across web development, hardware prototyping, machine learning, as well as get a chance to kind of critically explore the ways in which creative practice can tackle some of the problems technology claims to solve and some of the problems that it raises in doing so. And beyond this, the diploma, in many senses, is really the course I wanted when I was at university myself. It's a chance to take a break away from what you're currently studying with no penalty. You have a chance to explore new skills and new opportunities and then bring those back into your own practice. And the CCI, the diploma in general, isn't just a coding bootcamp, right? Um, it's, on one hand, a place in which you can learn programming skills and how to apply them in the creative practice, or to augment your existing practice through new tools and technologies. But if you want to learn to code, there's no real shortcut to kind of taking the time to study and practice. 
um, but what CCI offers and the diploma is uh, access to a host of creative lecturers and creative lectures in general, um, staff who know what it means to bridge creative practice and programming, as well as offering a strong critical and theoretical foundation to developing your practice. And whilst online courses can teach you the skills you might need to be able to become a programmer or developer, they won't teach you how to integrate these into an artistic practice and will often gloss over how to critically develop your ideas in the context that they can sit within. As Georgina mentioned, we have a kind of living environment at the CCI, and as you've seen in our videos, you know, our students um, are continually here in the space, interacting with one another and interacting with, I can't stress this enough, our fantastic technical team. Um, so the advantage of doing CCI and doing the diploma above doing just a coding bootcamp is really the environment that you're situated within, within a load of creative practitioners critical thinkers and people who can work alongside you to help you troubleshoot your projects, give you ideas and help you to navigate the world of computing. And even if you already code, the diploma is a chance to apply your skills through a variety of exercises to a new set of problems, right? And as you'll see from the units, there's really a chance for you to explore some exciting new topics, to explore coding as a way to critically examine some of the most pressing problems faced by our society. Right? What we're interested in are the problems that computing allows us to think through. Um, some of the larger scale questions that can really drive and shape your practice and make an impact in the world. You know, we want to instill a critical disposition towards science and technology within you. This doesn't mean we want you to think that it's bad, but we want you to get hands-on experience with computing to understand the ways in which it's capable of changing the world and the ways in which it's already doing so. One thing I cannot press enough is that the diploma is a pass fail course. Um, this is incredibly important because it gives you a chance to experiment. There is no penalty within this. We're not really concerned about grades here. What we're interested in is you pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone. Not to treat this as a course that you're kind of obliged to turn up to or submit assignments to for a specific grade, but somewhere you can radically experiment with practices and processes from a wide range of disciplines. And this is what we aim to do with a mix of emphasis on programming skills and conceptual development is to build you into truly interdisciplinary practitioners, not just people who think conceptually about different domains, not just people who apply their existing practice to a variety of questions, but to become practitioners who are as comfortable with programming as they are photography, or painting, and to explore the potential of how both domains can impact one another. And we embrace this through a real range of interdisciplinary lectures from data privacy and behavioral economics to biologies of vision and the philosophy of intelligence. Right? Graduates from the diploma have moved on to explore working in uh, creating medical prostheses, working with robotics, exploring machine learning in the context of painting practice or expanded digital practice. They've become web developers, set up their own studios, some work at the intersection of biodesign and computing. The diploma is really a chance to accelerate your practice through an intense, but hopefully enjoyable, year of experimentation. So how do we do this? The diploma is structured into six units across two blocks. These blocks, which run from September to January for the first block and February to June for the second, each have three units. Um, and at the end of this, there's a summer show that we put on, which this week will be running towards the end of June, which we'd love to see some of you at. Um, and the first blocks um, units are designed to give you a solid introduction to a core set of computing skills that will see you through the course and beyond. Uh, we have creative coding, um, physical computing, and a new one for this year, cognitive systems. And we'll go into a little bit more detail about these as, we, as the lecturers give you a discussion. In the second block, uh, we have a bit more practice-led experimentation. You'll work both as individuals and groups by applying your skills to or kind of creatively approaching specific problems in the environmental humanities, learning about machine learning and thinking about how you can produce work for exhibition. And we have a specific uh, unit on machine learning, a unit on critical infrastructures, which is around environmental sensing and kind of broader in computational infrastructures in everyday life and computational environments as well. So. To start with, I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Erti, um, who is the unit tutor for the Creative Coding module. Um, thank you, Murat. 
Hello, everyone. I'm Arthi. Uh, Murad's already given you an overarching view of what the diploma encompasses. I'm going to just specifically talk about this unit. So this unit enables students with varying levels of creative coding experiences to develop a solid grounding in coding languages and computational concepts, which are key to the practice of creative computing. It allows students to develop their professional practice alongside grasping computational fundamentals that synergize synergize well with other units in the diploma. The unit content is delivered in up to four hours of synchronous teaching per week that covers languages such as JavaScript or Python by accessible frameworks such as P5.js. Furthermore, students will also be exposed to the wider theoretical concepts, which will help situate their work in a context and enable them to develop well thought out and grounded projects. By the end of the unit, students will have developed problem solving skills that can be applied to any field and will have the confidence to continue their coding journey by realizing their own self-initiated projects. Uh, cool. I'm not sure if you're seeing the slides as well. One second, I'm just waiting for them to bring up the slides. Perfect. So this is an example of uh, last year's uh, diploma student project, I believe. Uh, it was Claudia's project. So Claudia utilizes projection as a medium to develop interactive installations in this uh, project over here. Uh, then this is Isabel's project. This is a student from this year. So Isabel's project takes cues from the French physicist Julius on Julia Jules Anton's work based on the possibilities of visualizing sound. The work explores the natural projection of energy confined within a space, responding to uneven surfaces non predicted by the mouse interaction. It uses the mouse position as a singular source and a starting point of all particles whose journey is dictated by their velocity and position. This is just an example of some of the student work that comes out of the unit itself. But as you can see, it's just its work that also is contextually grounded as well. It's just not something that's playful, but it has a deeper meaning in it. Uh, so that's what the unit also entails. Uh, yeah, I will let my colleague Shen Sykes take over for this. Thank you. Yeah, hi everyone. So physical computing, I think often we think of when we use creative code, we stay within the realm of the screen and uh, maybe a digital based output. But in the physical computing unit, we look at materials in particular. How can we expand into the material world? So we look at things like sensors, motors, kinetic outputs, but also we touch upon things like how do we fabricate um, things around these sensors? So in the introductory facilities video, you saw laser cutting and 3D printing and the soldering facilities. So this unit introduces you to those areas and how you can bring them into your practice and into the work that you make. So this is a piece from last year from Zach. Zach's project combined 3D printing, Arduino, which is an open source physical computing tool, and EEG data to develop a mask that communicated emotional expression in a response to the electro signals from your brain. So it used a little sensor in order to do that communicating. This is some of this year's projects that they finished just around January time. And this is just a very quick showreel of different uh, projects. So you can see that there's a big range here. Some students uh, aim to incorporate physical computing into a fine art practice. Some use it for interaction design or maybe service design or product design. And other students sit in between these areas. They really look at a mixture of, of different ways of utilizing, bringing in materials into their coding practice. So here we have a tool that perhaps could be used for performance, um, different ways of taking readings from a dancer and movement to control different visual outputs. Here we have a ro robot that's been made to watch endless TV over and over and over again and do the job for you. Uh, and again, this utilized 3D printing. Here we have archiving receipts and how we can make a collection of that. So different ways of 
visualizing data, but through physical paper materials instead of screen-based graphs. Here we have a, a really playful plant-like mechanic, machine, robotic machine, um, and a fine art sculptural output that's responding to wind sensor data, plant life sensors. You can see there's a big range and free range essentially to bring your own creative concepts and ideas into this unit and approach it in ways in which suit you and suit your way of working. So this little sensor actually detects, you can wear it on yourself and detects other people, keeps people away or close to you, depending on what you like. And coming up just in one second is the final bit of the unit, which was this student approach soft robotics and different pneumatic uh, inputs and outputs, depending on that. So I'll just hand back over to Murad to talk about the last unit here. Perfect. Thank you, Jen. Um, so as I mentioned, there is a new unit, part of the diploma in for the 23 to 24 cohort, uh, which is called Cognitive Systems. Um, and this is uh, an exciting unit in which we're going to be exploring the history of intelligence systems. So thinking around the rise of artificial intelligence and machine learning, we're going to take you back somewhat and look at early experiments in robotics, and contemporary approaches in human and non-human interpretations of intelligence. We'll learn to program simulations, test machine learning models, and build robotic prototypes through a mix of JavaScript and Arduino-based sessions. Um, here we have an example of quite a famous um, piece of creative computing kind of history, uh, which is John Conway's Game of Life, which shows how complex systems or complex interactions can emerge from a simple set of rules. Um, and as part of this unit, we're going to develop a real critical understanding of what we mean when we talk about intelligence. So what does it mean to see? What does it mean to perceive? What are the impacts it has on our ability to think and understand the world? So that's block one in which you'll get a really hands-on, and as you've seen with some of our student projects, exciting approach to learning creative computing, but also a really practice-led approach um, to your output. For block two, um, we have a specific unit on machine learning in which you will have an ability to look at creative applications of machine learning technologies, as well as kind of critical debates around data sets, ethics, and autonomous systems. So we'll look at things like natural language processing, and computer vision, synthetic or generated data. We'll see how these can be integrated into both digital and physical practices. One of the example works from last year is Oliver Shipton, um, whose work experimented with generative adversarial networks. He explores more broadly in his work, uh, religion, masculinity, and queer identity. In this case, it's a, a data set of Catholic Orthodox icons, which he was generating new forms from. We also have a unit on critical infrastructures, which looks at ways in which computing can intervene in the environment. We'll look at environmental sensing technologies, surveillance technologies. It's both a look at how computing both becomes an infrastructure, uh, but also the ways in which it creates, um, ways in which we live, ways in which we interact, and ways in which the city is formed. And as part of this unit, we'll encourage you to build devices to explore the built environment, as well as thinking about how to visualize data um, both digitally and physically. One example of this kind of work is a brief run by some of our students recently who have explored the creation of a wearable air pollution monitor, uh, which inflates based on the amount of pollution that the user encounters in their day to day. The final unit for this, which is run by Electrogen Sites again, we can bring Jen back up, um, is the Computational Environments Unit. Hi, yeah, so in the computational environments unit, this unit in particular focuses on how we take our existing knowledge. So things that we've learned in block one and also things that we're learning throughout block two as well. And how do we develop that with spatial interventions in mind and also making work for public experience. So putting work out there for other people. And that could influence looking at computer vision. So on the right here, we've got uh, a body skeleton tracker uh, doing an interactive 
uh, game experience. On the, on the left here, we've got kind of projection mapping as a medium uh, to work with. Use, using P5 again, which is something, it's a, a library around JavaScript, which you look at in block one. And these methods kind of get reiterated and added upon in order to, for you to further develop your work. Um, a lot of students use this unit to uh, add to their portfolio, but also as an opportunity to take something that they've made from this unit and include it in a graduate show at the end of the year. So it often happens around June. Um, Murad mentioned it at the beginning and hopefully people can come and see this year's uh, projects that have been made as well. So here's some of the last year's summer show, actually, different pieces of work. And you can see the range of outputs from very material based uh, work on the left to print static machine learning driven work on the right. Great, thank you, Jen. Um, and exactly as you said, um, this is some of our work from last year where we've got on the left a chair which a student has grown their own mushrooms for, attached capacitive touch sensors and turned a chair into a kind of a musical organic instrument. On the right, we have an example of a student who, again, played with generative adversarial networks for their painting practice and used these as a way to create new references. Um, Kate's work explored the use of uh, photos from the meat market, which she had taken before the COVID lockdown, um, and then used these as references to develop a new, a new form of painting for her practice. And we have a variety of words throughout the year. And again, we really, really want you to experiment with the deployment. No material, no approach um, is too out there for us. Um, from mycelium heads, which are grown uh, using and controlled growth using Arduino, through to creating a line following and drawing robot, to using butterflies and to explore the extinction of butterflies uh, through a body tracking software. Um, so just to round off then, um, I want to talk a little bit about the application process. Um, you know, how do you apply to the diploma? It's very, very simple. You either apply to us by the first deadline, which is Friday the 28th of March, or by the second, which is Sunday the 28th of May. Um, we are pretty much a first come first serve course. So when we have enough students to meet our criteria, we won't be able to let any more in. This doesn't mean you have to rush an application for this session. But it is important that you get these in early because we're continually reviewing the students that are coming in. You can apply through the CCI's website and there is a short form to fill in, the most important part of which is your reason for wanting to join the course, as well as your portfolio. And we'll review these applications as a team and get back to you all either by the 21st of April for the first deadline, the 23rd of June for the second. And it's really, really important to note that the portfolio doesn't need to contain any explorations of computing or technology. You know, if you're a fashion student, your practice is entirely textiles based, we want to see it. If you're a graphic designer working with biomaterials, we want to see that. If you're a digital artist or illustrator working on narrative storytelling, we want to see that. Um, what we're interested in is how your skills blend with other students in the course and what you can bring to an interdisciplinary practice. We can scale you up when it comes to programming, but what we're interested in is how you think and how you approach kind of more material practice. If you have any questions about this, please email our program admin team. Um, if you've got any questions about course content in particular, whether you're nervous about how much you need to know or the kinds of things that we do in the unit, uh, please feel free to reach out to me and email me. Um, if you would like a tour around CCI and some of our spaces, then also please feel free to reach out to me as well. and We can organize some later on in the year. Cool. And that's everything, thank you. Thank you so much, Murat, for giving us such a thorough overview of the course. And thanks to Arti and Jen for your insightful contribution as well. That was fantastic. Now, it's a pleasure to invite Sam, Nadine, and Ashley to this virtual space. Sam is a current student at the graduate diploma, and Nadine and Ashley are coming from their respective 
BA courses and have joined the UAL diploma in creative computing. We've got around 20 minutes now where we're going, we're going to be going through some frequently asked questions about the diploma, but we encourage you to ask us any doubts, any questions you have about CCI, about the students' experience at the course. You have an amazing opportunity here to get to know everything that you want to know before applying or considering joining us here at CCI. So please take the most out of it because it's an amazing opportunity for you to do so. So first of all, thank you, Sam. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Nadine, for joining us. It would be fantastic to hear a little bit about yourself. What courses, what colleges from UAL are you coming from? And what was the motivation behind joining the Diploma in Creative Computing? Um, shall we start with Nadine, who's at the top? Hi. Um, so I'm from, I, my original course is Graphic Communication Design at CSM. Um, and I have always been interested in computer related technology, but I found that I never really had the skill set that I needed to fully realize ideas that I wanted to use in my project. So when I found out about the diploma, um, it sounded like a great opportunity to just take a year out to develop those skills. Because when you're like, you know, going through a brief, there's very little time to actually like pick up new skills. You just have to get things done. So yeah, I really like the idea of being able to take out a year to just explore like have free reign and what I want to learn kind of. Yeah. Thank you, Nadine. Mm -hmm. Sam, would you like to go next? I'm afraid, Sam, you're muted. Let me just see if I can unmute you. Hi. There you go. Can you hear me? Yes, we can oh, hear yeah. you now. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hi, I'm Sam. I'm a graduate of diploma student, and I've been working in PR and branding uh, for a couple of years, and I'm really interested in this kind of technology things, and um, I find that, like um, UIL uh, CCI is a really good place to start to uh, start this kind of things because um, it's easier and it's uh, it's creative. That's like the point that I choose CCI, and I I feel very happy that I have been. Uh, when I came here because um, I love this uh, uh, community and I think it's a um, really good uh, start to explore technology here because it's not that hard and it's interesting and you can also like um, communicate with the, uh, different background people so I think it's really good experience to start like uh, to give yourself a new start to start technology. Thank you Sam. I love the fact that you share that it's not that hard because I think a lot of students are interested in getting into creative computing yes. but are a little bit intimidated by coding because maybe they've never done it before. So it's great to hear your experience about how you approached it first. What about you, Ashley? Were you coming from a coding background? How, how was it for you? Um, no, I also came from graphic communication design uh, at CSM. Uh, and similar to me, actually, had used uh, creative computing and projects but had never really understood the sort of background to the code. I wanted to actually understand what was going on there. And I feel like that was what interested me about in this course. Thank you, Ashley. That's fantastic. Um, there's like a question that always comes up, which is like, do I need to know how to code to apply? And I guess here everyone has sort of like mentioned that, no, that's not the case. But would someone like to add something to that? Maybe like, your, how was your experience like getting into the course and starting to learn a little bit about coding and how these languages work? Is there someone who would like to share a little bit about their experience with that? Yeah, Sam? Yes. Um, yes, I have no technology background actually. And I don't, you know, I don't know how to code and I don't know what this kind of things, but I feel very happy because when you come here, you will like have a really clear structure uh, to learn how to code and all the like technology things. And I think the most important thing that I learned from here is like the coding skill is not the most important thing. The most important thing is you need to have like the, um, um, a really, you know, the technical structure and like know what's the, you know, the the thing back, uh, back, uh, 
in the back of the technology. And I think um, the understanding is m much more important than your like technical skill. So I think don't uh, just don't worry about your like uh, your background or your, all kind of things. It's just like follow your passion and like give you a new chance to start it to like learn new some things you will feel like really interesting and you will you know see a new pattern of your life yeah that's my mm. key thank you for this encouraging message Sam Nadine your turn yeah um I was just saying I think like um your background is actually your strength in joining the diploma because what I found is it's a place to kind of bring a new perspective to this technology. And so even if you have no background in that, um, what you will bring to it will be something unique to you. And that I think is exciting. Like that's what I've picked up on a lot in the course that you kind of, you make it your own sort of practice essentially. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Nadine. We have a question coming from the audience from Holly. So I'm just gonna display it on the, screen, uh, Hollis is asking us, what is the difference between the diploma portfolio application and the graduate diploma portfolio application? Would you like to answer to that yeah. one, Murat? Sure. Um, so in reality, there is no real difference, right? Because both of them are designed to be able to get you to show us your skills. Now, this can be skills, whether it comes to writing, it can be material practice, um, it can be example projects you've done in the past, it can be freelance work. If you're on the graduate diploma, for example, there's no real difference between a portfolio. All we're looking for is an exhibition of the kinds of things that you're interested in doing, uh, the kinds of things that you think about um, and the kinds of things that you make. Thank you, Murat. That's very helpful. Nice. So we could cover now another question that comes up quite often, which is about the size of course and classes. So maybe here we could be hearing a little bit about one of the students who are present here talking us through how do you find the classes? Is it like easy to get along with the material that is provided? What is your experience being part of the, the big course? Who would like to talk a little bit about it? Ashley, yeah. Sure, yeah. Um, I think actually it's a pretty big cohort of people who tend to join um, the course. But also what that means is that there's a bunch of people from different courses who are there. And I think particularly in the second block that we're doing now, which is much more exploratory, um, we're getting the opportunity to actually work alongside them um, and collaborate. And you kind of see ideas and workflows that come in from other courses, which are completely different to what it is that you would do in your traditional home course. Um, if That's obviously for the, uh, the diploma. So yeah, it's really exciting to sort of have the opportunity and see what their ideas are. And it kind of makes you reevaluate actually what the output could be um, versus what you normally just like do as personally for me as a graphic designer. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's, that's a really good point that actually makes is that there's no real other place across UL or on any of the courses where you get a chance to interface with this many people across this many courses, right? Even if you're a part of a society, um, you will never get to meet this many people as you do on the diploma. And when you're working in creative computing or computer science or software engineering in general, working as part of a team um, and the diversity of that is a really, really important skill to learn. And actually no project is really just made by the individual. Myself, Jen and Dirty can, can all attest to the fact that you know, when you're building large scale uh, projects, or when you're programming, or when you're working on something for a show, um, it's never just you. Uh, there's a whole host of people with a different range of skill sets who are bringing all these ideas to the forefront. I think what's continually exciting about the diploma and all the students we have, and especially this year, is that they're constantly surprising us with the avenues that they go down, the materials that they explore, and the ideas that they generate. Um, so having this real mix of people has been really exciting. Thank you, Murat. It must be a very enriching experience for sure being able to share your learning experience with so many people coming from so many different backgrounds and colleges must be very beautiful nice then another question that we receive quite a lot as well is about the showcase opportunities that students will have now Murad, you've talked about the opportunity that diploma students will have of like showcasing their final work would you like to maybe talk a little bit more about it and how was our experience last year putting together that beautiful show and maybe this will also help 
get people encouraged at being part of the course because it is an amazing opportunity to really um, dive deeper into into yeah. their creative practice. Absolutely, yeah. So the, the end of show comes after all your assignments are done, and it's a nice way to wrap up everything. Actually, at the end of the year, um, we have both staff members from the course, uh, students, alumni students, prospective students, industry practitioners, and people from companies such as Apple and Google or galleries like Arbeit and the Photographers Gallery or Independent Studio, all coming to visit our show at the end of the year. And this is a real chance for you to work either together um, as part of a group to spin up an idea or as an individual to work and develop a piece um, that maybe you start on earlier in the year and show it to the public. Um, so it's a really exciting opportunity, I think, for students, and especially students at UAL currently, um, to practice what it means to show. It's a way for you to try out, actually, and explore ideas and explore what it means to showcase here before you go back to your home course, before you go back to that final graduate showcase that you'll have in your degree as well, to test things out. Um, the diploma, I think, is actually a great year in general for a lot of this testing out to figure out, you know, what are the ways in which you can produce public facing works, uh, works which aren't just for assignments or assessments, uh, but ones in which people can interact with. And I think this is really the really exciting part of this. And the units that Jen leads really tap into this, computational environments in particular, because it allows you to explore the ways in which, you know, audiences will interact with your work, uh, the way in which it extends beyond just perhaps you yourself and allows you to build things out at scale. Um, and I think we had a really great experience last year with producing things in the summer for the show. It was a really nice environment, a really nice way to wrap up the year, actually. Hmm. Thank you, Morat, for sharing. Now, I thought that it would be really beautiful to ask you, uh, Nadine, Sam and Ashley, if you had to like tell your own self before applying to the diploma, something that would encourage you to really like do, like make this step for, for your own creative career, what would it be that you would tell yourself? Like, what is it that you would like to share with prospective students who are now considering getting into creative computing and expanding their own creative practice? Um, would you like to share something on that front? Nadine? <laughs> um, sure, I think uh, when I was deciding whether or not I wanted to do the diploma, one of the things I was considering that it would just be an extra year of study um, and in, in hindsight, I realized that it doesn't really matter if it's an extra year, like it's a very enriching year, in my opinion. Um, and yeah, so it wouldn't be like initially I thought, would I be wasting time? Should I just graduate and be done with it? But then I realized that I wouldn't have the like the opportunity, to, as I said before, to develop the skills that I wanted. So, yeah, I'm really glad that I did decide to do the um, that I decided to take this year out. Um, yeah, I think like not worrying about like how long it takes you to kind of figure out your practice is something important that I've learned. Um, like everyone has their own journey and you will figure it out as you go along, I guess. Yeah. Thank you, Nadine. Sam, would you like to share as well? Yeah, um, uh, I would like to ask everyone a question, like uh, if back to 10 years ago and you feel like, oh, cell phone is a good Thing and but sometimes it's really uh, it's a little bit hard to use this kind of uh, tool. But can you imagine that this day you even cannot you know you don't know how to use the cell phone? What will happen? Yes, and you know um, as my pers uh, my personal perspective is like the technology is a big tendency in the future, and you know. Uh, this tour can uh, give you a better skill to um, embrace the future you like. So I think if you want to embrace the future, just come and join us. And the second part I want to share is like um, CCI community is a really, really nice community because like, uh, have you ever heard about like growth my mindset? Yes, um, I think uh, if you start here, you will easily like embrace uh, everything and you will uh, you know like have more confidence have more opportunities to like imagine about the you know beautiful future so i think if you are like passionate about this kind of things please join us thank you sam lovely words ashley what would you like to say to yourself <laughs> 
Um, I feel like coming in, I was sort of just saying that it would be a nice year to learn some technology, like te technological sort of skills. Um, I think I was definitely looking at it from a more like practical stance. Um, but actually, I was sort of pleasantly surprised that the sort of like critical engagement that comes particularly sort of with like some of the like essay writing that happens um, and also just the general conversations that you have with the tutors. It sort of expands your uh, visions of creative computing and like how that sector might look um, as opposed to just being someone who just does something as they're told, you know, designs a website or something like that. You're able to sort of ask those questions about what that actually means. Um, I think also just like the attentiveness and like helpfulness of all the technicians, you come with to them with an idea and they're just able to sort of like run all these ideas you would never even think of. Um, so I think the technicians and like the conversations you have with the tutors and also the community around is more than I expected, to be honest. Um, yeah, so that's what I do for myself. Thank you, Ashley. That really brings us to almost the end of the session. And we always love to give closure to the space, talking about the CCI community, which is something that you've all already sort of talked about. But it would be nice to just do a little round, including the lecturers and, and Murd as well as course leader, and maybe just say a couple of things uh, about what is this CCI community like and what is it about it that really that you really love and that you would like to share with the audience. So we can start with Nadine at the top. Yeah, um, one thing that I found coming here is that I think um, both the peers and the teachers, like everyone is so helpful and it's so easy to get the support that you need compared to other courses, I will say. Um, and yeah, like everyone is just always willing to help or have a, have a conversation. And I think um, it's a great place for collaborative learning as well. So not just from the teachers, but from your peers, like you, you learn so much from each other um, and yeah, I, th I think it's just a great, very like supportive space. Um, yeah, that allows you to like push your boundaries and kind of, yeah, explore the ideas that you want to um, in, in whatever it means. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Nadine. Sam, your turn. Well, uh, I would like to use two sentences to describe uh, this question. The first one is like, maybe it's from Erdi, and uh, he most, uh, he, he said to us, like always uh, repeat these sentences, we are here to help, to help everyone. And that's like, uh, it's very impressed for me. And the second sentence is, um, there's no stupid question here. So I, I think you can do anything. You can ask any question. You can do anything you want. So yeah, that that's what that that's what I'm feeling. Thank you, Sam. Jen, would you like to add something to that as well? Hi. Yeah. Sure. So um, I'm also a student as well as a member of staff, as I am currently doing my PhD at CCI, and I think as someone that is in both areas, uh, what I really like most about the community is uh, no one um, no one looks down on a on a on an idea. If you have a strange or unusual idea, a way of using technology, everyone embraces it really well, um, and there isn't there isn't any any wrong answer over here. Thank you, Jen. More at your next. Yeah, I think for me, I, you know, I mentioned that diploma is something I would have liked to have had myself, in, you know, when I was at uni. But I think more than that, CCI is felt like a, a place that I've been looking for for a very long time. You know, I've been in multiple different departments, multiple different disciplines. It was never quite a place that felt like home, it felt like I could ask all the kind of questions I was interested in with people who were interested in all the same things that I was interested in. I think the CCI community is one which is just so diverse in the range of people we have, the kinds of things people are interested in. It really feels like a, a real home. Thank you, Murat. Ashley, you're next on my screen. Honestly, what I would say is just spend time here. Like, the best thing I've done is just to hang out, have lunch, spend time uh, over in like the technician's area and 
knowledge just sort of like comes to you like people will just be doing a project next to you that you're like oh uh, what are you doing and then you suddenly have this like massively enriching conversation so i feel like honestly i would just say like just spend time here and you have a great one so thank you ashley arty you're the last one I think everybody sort of covered the things I feel about CCF, but since I've been here since a very long time, by, like I was here when CCF was being formed as well. I think if I were to sum up the CCI community in one word, I think it would be family to me and CCI as a place is a playground. Like the fact that you, you can come up with an idea and there, there are 10 people interested in working with you around it. I think that's really nice. It's always nice to see how much drive there is in between students to sort of push their boundaries. I mean, all of that really excites me. I've been in a lot of different educational environments and corporate settings, but CCI is unlike any other place I've been in. So it really makes me happy to be here. Thank you, Arti. That was such a beautiful way of ending the session. <laughs> Thanks, uh, everyone. Thank you, Nadine, Sam, Jen, Arti, Ashley, Murat for being here and for sharing all about this amazing course that we have here at the Creative Computing Institute. For everyone watching, I hope it was an insightful and useful presentation that all your questions about the CCI and the diploma were answered. Now, don't forget that tomorrow we're back at the same time with a taster session from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. where Murat and current students Sam Nadine and Ashley will walk you through an exercise where you'll be able to explore critical and creative perspectives on classification systems particularly. And you'll have the chance to learn how to build a simple machine learning model for classification and object detection, as well as get an understanding of how it can be used in creative applications. So do not miss this session. It will give you an amazing insight into what a class at the diploma could look and, and feel like. You'll receive a link to join the session via email. And in the meantime, if there's any other questions that you have about the course, you can email us at cci at arts.ac.uk. Please feel free to reach out with whatever question you have. And we also invite you to follow us on social media at UAL underscore CCI on Instagram and Twitter. There we find, we, we just share all about events, opportunities to, to join us and explore creative computing with us. And you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel where we'll be sharing loads of beautiful and useful content on the topic. We look forward to meeting you tomorrow as well and in real life very soon, hopefully. Thanks everyone and take care.